when when we look at the heart we look at the heart in in, in regional walls or segments and um The, the 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 different segments usually um, the different segments usually tell you which blood supply uh, what which blood vessel is supplying that area. So if we take the heart and this is what the heart looks like, and if we bread loaf the heart into short axis, so we're going to cut it from the apex. And then we're gonna to go to the mid cavity level where the papillary muscle is, and then to the base where the mitral valve is. So we get something looking like this at the apex. So we'll bread loaf it, just so you cut a loaf of bread. This is the apex, this is the mid cavity level, and this is the base. So when we talk about the mid cavity level, you have the papillary muscles there. And then we talk about the base, you have the mitral valve there. So when we look at the apex, we can divide this apex into four regions. The top we call the anterior wall, the bottom we call the inferior wall, and this is the lateral wall over there, and the septal wall, okay? And the reason why we do this is because the blood supply or the blood vessel um, The, the, the different segments um, have different blood supply. So if someone has a heart attack and you see just the anterior wall not moving, you can uh, surmise which blood vessel is occluded. So this is the apex. We divide it into four segments or four uh, regional walls, the anterior, the inferior, the lateral, and the septal wall. At the base level, where we have the papillary muscle, so these little humps represent the papillary muscle. This is your anterior lateral papillary muscle. This is the posterior medial papillary muscle. At the base of the heart, we divide, we divide it into six segments or six regional walls. Of course, we have the anterior on top. We have the inferior down the bottom. And then this would normally be the lateral wall but we divide the lateral wall into an anterior lateral wall because this portion is closer to the anterior wall. So it's the anterior lateral wall, and then this would be your inferior lateral wall. And then you have the inferior wall. This would be your septum, but we divide the septum into two uh, segments. The lowermost portion is the inferior septum, and then this would be your anterior septum because it's closer to the anterior wall. So we have six segments at the, the, the mid-cavity level. At the base of the heart, we have the papillary muscle. At the base of the heart, we have the mitral valve now. We also divide it into six segments. We have the anterior on top, we have the inferior down the bottom. This would normally be the lateral wall, but we divide the lateral wall into two segments. You have the inferior lateral and the anterior lateral. The septum, the same thing, you divide it into two segments. So you have the inferior septum and the anterior septum. So that is how we look at the, 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 the heart when we bread loaf it. And these, if you, if you recall, these are short axes. These are short axes. You can also bread loaf the heart um, in a longitudinal plane, okay? You can bread loaf the heart in a longitudinal plane. And if you remember, this is your apical four chamber view. And this would be your this would be your um your 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 anterior lateral wall. Remember? So anterior lateral wall, and this would be your inferior septum. And then the, the little the little uppermost portion we call the apical cap. But your anterior lateral wall closer to the mitral valve. Remember, the mitral valve is right there. Closer to the mitral valve, that's a basal segment. So this would be your basal anterior lateral wall. And then closer to the papillary muscles, your mid segment. So this would be your mid anterior lateral wall. And then this would be your apical anterior lateral wall. This is our inferior septum close to the mitral valve. This is your basal inferior lateral wall. 
mid inferior lateral wall and apical. So the thing to do is not to memorize it. Just remember that this is the lateral wall. At the lowermost portion, the basal, this is the mid and the apical lateral wall. This is the septum. The lowermost portion is the, 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 the basal. This is the mid and this is the apical. So you divide it into six segments. So apical cannot be separate. This is your two chamber view. And of course, you know how to get your two chamber view. On top, you have the anterior wall. On the bottom, you have the inferior wall. Closer to the mitral valve is the basal. This is the mid, and this is the apical. So this will be a basal anterior, mid anterior, and apical anterior. Then when you come to the inferior wall, same thing, basal, mid, and apical, okay? The basal is always closer to the mitral valve. The mid is the middle sex uh, where your papillary muscle is, and then the apical portion is right there. This is your apical three-chamber view or the long axis view. Apical three or long axis view. This is your anterior septum, and this is the inferior lateral. Anterior septum, inferior lateral. So again, basal anterior uh, septum, mid anterior septum, apical anterior septum. This is your inferior lateral, so basal inferior lateral, mid inferior lateral, apical. Uh, so you you see there's a pattern. So you don't really have to you, you, you sh if you if you memorize in it, then you you know you 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 don't get it. So what you need to do is go over it and 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 and, and uh, understand the the, the 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 concept what we're we're um, trying to get at again anterior is at top inferior is below lateral septal okay um, so these are the regional walls. Um, and this is how we look at the heart, because by just looking at a segment, we can tell which blood vessel is occluded. And this is how we do it. All right, so before we get there, so you can see that the parasternal lung axis, you know, we, we usually don't use it too much in our assessment in terms of um, looking at the regional walls, mainly the short and the apical views. So if you remember your, um, with your four chamber view, you have six segments, two chamber view, you also have six segments, three chamber view, you also have six segments. Um, when we look at a segment, remember, it's not really motion that we're looking at. We're looking at thickening because when the heart contracts, it thickens. When you have a heart attack, and if you see someone with, you know, significant heart attack, the, the wall may be moving, but it's not thickening at all. A dead muscle do not thicken. So that's, that's one thing we look at. Another concept you have to try and grasp is when we look at the different walls, we, we give them numbers. And when you look at any echo report, um, especially if it's computer driven, it, 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 it's going to have numbers. And a normal wall motion it gets a score of one. And what we mean by that, it has good motion and it has good thickening. A normal motion, normal thickening, score of one. It gets a score of two if it's hypokinetic. And what we mean by that, it's not thickening properly. You can see that it's probably thickening a little bit, but not to the full extent. And then akinetic, there's just no thickening. Okay, it may be moving, but it's not thickening. So the most important thing when we talk about regional wall motion is, is thickening. And then dyskinetic and aneurysmal, we, we lump them together and uh, the current uh, classification is four. So we don't have a five anymore. We, we just group dyskinetic and aneurysmal and give it four. 
there's something we call wall motion score index. And what that is, we, we take 16 segments, and some people will take 17 segments. So we, we take 16 segments, and we look at those 16 segments, and we score each of the segments. We score the segments, and we add them up. So the, the, the sum of the wall motion scores. So for example, if we take 16 segments, and each of the segments, we score one. That means it's normal. So the total score will be 16 times one, 16. And because we use 16 segments, the number of segments is 16. So 16 divided by 16 is one. So the wall motion score index would be one. And again, one mean normal. Okay, so if you remember that. So, but if you look at your 16 segments and each of them has a, is hypokinetic, each segment is hypokinetic, then you and you sum them so it's 16 times 2 will be 32 but the number of segments is 16 so 32 divided by 16 is 2 so the wall motion score index is 2 and you can use a 17 segment where you just have the apical cap so again remember when we say normal which which get a score of 1 we talk about normal thickening when we say ipo Kinesis decrease thickening. So it's not motion, it's thickening. When we say akinesis, it's the absence of thickening. And then we lump these two together. Okay, but dyskinesis means it's a paradoxical systolic motion. When it's supposed to come in, it, it goes out instead. And then aneurysm, there's thinning and permanent dilatation. Okay. So we have a, something we call a polar plot. And it looks confusing, but it's very simple. So the polar plot, remember our apex. So these are our short axis segments. So we take our apex and we plug it in down here. We take the basal segment and we plug it in here. And then we, we sorry, we take the mid segment and we plug in the mid segment here. And we take the basal segment and we plug it in right there. So we have the whole heart on display right there. And we can, in, in computer driven reports, the different, so these are different segments. So let, let us go through them. So the first, so this 17 is the apical cap because if you were to just take off. The, the, the apex, you know, it, it would remind you of a little cap. So that's the apical cap. But when we do our apical cut, remember when we bread loaf the heart and we get the apex, and we have four segments, we talk about the anterior wall, inferior wall, but at the apex, the lateral wall at the apex, and the septum at the apex, it's right there. So at the, at the mid cavity level now, we divide it into six segments. So up here, this would be your anterior wall. Down here would be your inferior wall. This would normally be the, the lateral wall, but because this portion of the lateral wall is closer to the apex, we call it the anterior lateral wall. This is closer to the inferior wall, so we call it the inferior lateral wall. And then this would be your septum. But because this portion of the septum is closer to the anterior wall, we call it the anterior septal wall. This portion of the septum is closer to the inferior wall, so we call it the inferior, uh, inferior septum. Okay, so inferior septum. And then this is the base. Again, remember the base is where you have the mitral valve. We also divide that into six segments the anterior wall, the inferior wall. This is your inferior lateral wall, anterior lateral wall, the septum over here. So this is your anterior septum, inferior septum, okay? So a lot of your computer-driven reports are going to have a polar plot. And the beauty about it, in these 
different segments, it gives you a wall motion score. So you might have one all over, and and when you have one all over, it gives it's green. So that you're just looking at it, you know, it's a normal heart. It may have two. So remember, two is hypokinesis. It may have three, which is akinesis. But when you look at the polar plot, it just comes out and tell you, you know, where you have the problem. And we, we said all of this because the blood supply of the heart will, will um, the different segments will tell you which blood supply um, you're talking about. So if we look at the apex of the heart, so these, this is a, a um, this, this is a, a, a key that tells you uh, the different uh, blood, uh, blood vessels around the heart. RCA mean right coronary artery. LAD mean left anterior descending coronary artery. CX means the circumflex. And then you have different combination of uh, the blood vessels. But essentially, when you look at the heart, when we did the anatomy, you have the right coronary artery that comes off the right coronary cusp. You have your left main that comes off the, the left coronary cusp. And the left main divides into a left anterior descending coronary artery that comes in the front. And the left circumflex that goes around the back. If we look at our apex, most of your anterior and your septum is the LAD. So, you know, you can see we divide it into segments. So if you, if you look at this area and this area is not thickening, you, you, you know, it's the LAD that is, is occluded. Or if you look at the lateral wall and this is the portion that's not moving, you know, it's uh, probably the LAD and the circumflex. And then if you look at, down below the inferior wall is the RCA could be a part of the LAD but mainly the the the, the RCA um, so if you if this is the, the the segment that's not moving you know that it's probably the RCA that's occluded and then when you come to the mid cavity level the anterior and the anterior septum is the LAD the anterior lateral wall is the LAD and the circumflex. And then when we come now to the inferior lateral wall, it's probably the RCA and the circumflex. So you see it's color coded to tell you which blood vessel. And you don't have to memorize every detail, but to have, just have a, 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 a basic understanding, you know, that most of your anterior wall is gonna be LAD. Most of the inferior wall is going to be RCA. A lateral wall can be the circumflex and the LAD. And then when you have the base, again, anterior, anterior septum, LAD. So, you know, if, if we look and we see this segment is not thickening, we automatically know which blood vessel is occluded. So if we're going to do a categorization and a stenting procedure, we have an idea which blood vessel we 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 are um, going to target. And again, the anterior lateral is the LAD and circumflex. Your inferior lateral is probably the RCA and circumflex. And then the inferior and inferior septum is the RCA, right coronary artery. And again, the four, apical four chamber view, the lateral wall is LAD and circumflex. The apical cap and the, um, the, 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 uh, the apical cap and this is your um, your apical uh, inferior apical wall. So this is your inferior apical wall um, is the LAD and with a two chamber view. If the if the if the apex is gone, is the LAD. Long axis. If the apex is gone, LAD. So you you will see patients come to the echo lab and you do the, the, the echo and the apex is shot. You, you know it's the LAD that's occluded. So you can just go over uh, the blood supply and again, you don't have to have, remember all the detail. If you're talking about the, the apical four chamber view, 
The lateral wall is probably the LAD and circumflex. The apex and the apical septum, LAD. And then this lower portion, RCA. Two chamber view, anterior wall, anterior wall is gonna be LAD, okay? And then the inferior wall gonna be RCA. So just, just have a, 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 a basic understanding and, you know, when you do your echo, you can you can do a lot of prediction. Um, so again, this just look at the coronary flow distribution and the left ventricular segmentation. So that's what we just did. Um, so you can take your time, go over it, and um, you know, again, you don't have to memorize everything. Just have a, a basic understanding that that's all you need because. You know, th this is an uh, an approximate. Um, this is an approximation. It doesn't necessarily have to be a hundred percent correct. So just basic understanding would is is all you need. All right. So we're gonna stop here, and this concludes your left ventricular systolic. The basic lecture in evaluation of left ventricular systolic function. So we have more advanced lecture, but this, you know, you need to go over this, fully understand this.